All right. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I begin with those words due to the theme of today's stream. Uh, hold on, let me just do this so you don't really focus on my racket too much. Yeah, that's how we'll do it. Okay, yeah, I need to sit here. Eh, whatever. All right. So we got that sorted. Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be talking. We're going to be talking about. Uh, we, I'm going to be reading uh, the Mu'allaka, the Golden Ode, the Hanging Poem of Imra Ul Qais. Uh, yeah. Before I start, I just like to share it with my friends because right now this uh, channel has <laughs> very low amount of views. And um, yeah, I'm not really perfect at uh, streaming. But in any case, we're going to read and analyze the uh, poem Imr al Qais. I'm trying to delete this uh, failed attempt of a stream. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to open up the Mu'allaka itself. And yeah, what we're going to do today, read... Uh, the Malaka or the Golden Ode or the ha Hanging Poem in Arabic and at the same time I'm going to read it in English and then we're going to analyze it and comment on it and also I might leave some just uh, I don't know, I might stream a bit for the heck of it in case we get some viewers um, right, it seems that I can't really delete my last stream in any case that's fine um yeah, let me just share this. Okay. So, Imr ul Qais, Imr ul Qais. He is one of the seven very, very important poets of the Jahali pe period. One of the seven most important poets of the Jahili period. Uh, so, uh, all right, there we go. I think that should sort it. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Ibn al Qais, as far as I'm familiar with his bi biography, is somebody who lived in a very vassal like, he had a kind of vassal state among the Arabs, right? Which was very, very rare. Even though Arabs were not barbarian, they were civilized to a certain extent, as opposed to what many, many people falsely uh, believe about the history of pre Islamic Arabia. Uh, now, even I myself, I commented last time, I think, on uh, Arabs not having too much uh, royalty, but having more of a tribal kind of chieftain shamanistic system, right? Now, this is true. Um, there's a, There was a lot of tribalistic hierarchy, but Imr ul Qais happened to be a man of stature, right? A man who was a vassal. Um, and who cooperated with other actually states. So a man who had some very big fortune, but he loved to travel a lot, right? Now, one of the things that I wanted to re write about, actually, even though I'm just a student, was uh, the idea of suluk or the uh, idea of, of spiritual traveling in his uh, poetry, right? Because if we once we get once we delve deep into his po poem today. Uh, we're going to get to see that there is a lot of um, emphasis on noticing nature and noticing, uh, yeah, basically the, 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 the natural environment around oneself and noticing all kinds of human social, uh, I suppose you could say, symbols and, and social um, manifestations and commenting on them while you travel through that. So it's a kind of traveling ode. Now this is the first ode that we're reading. So we're going to start today. 
For those of you that are Arab, this is very familiar. Most Arabs know these first two verses. But for those of us that are not familiar, including myself, with Arabic poetry enough, these two verses are actually uh, very important because Imru'ul Qais is the first one that's mentioned within the Mu'allaqat series, within the Golden Ode series. Now, I'd like to mention, I have the book by Arbery here, recommended to everyone. I'll put the link later on when I finish the stream. Uh, the, um, the scholar Arbery wrote, a, he translated all the seven odes, right? So, let me just remember, we're on page 30 in the PDF, right? So, there are seven odes. Some, some scholars classify eight or nine, including some other poets. But the seven odes that we see here, the names of the seven odes, or rather the titles that the seven odes were given due to the first verse in the seven odes, in each of them, are the ones that are accepted by the majority of scholars, of, of, of Arabic literature scholars. Now, first one of them being the Mu'allaq of Imru al Qais. Now, the interesting thing about Arbery is that he named them in different names as opposed to how Arabs would name them. Now, the, the, the Qasida, the Arabic poem, generally doesn't have what they would say Anwan, or tit uh, which is translated as title or name of a poem. They have an Ittila, they have a Tala, or a kind of a rising into a occasion, right? Uh, and that would be the, the first bait, right? The first verse of the poem would be something that they would use to mark which poem they're talking about. So if they asked you, do you know this poem or do, do you know that poem? If somebody asked someone in, in the Arab world, in the ancient Arab world, or even in the Arab world today, they wouldn't say, al qasida tu lati tu samma, you know, the, 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 the poem that is named, that is called this and that, X, Y, Z. No, they wouldn't say that. They would say just the first verse. So for example, do you know the Hal Tarif Mu'allaqa Imra al Qais? Do you know the, 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 the golden ode of Imra al Qais? They would say, Naam, Arif Kifa Nabki min dikra Habibi Mumanzili. They would say, Yes, I know Kifa Nabki, and then the first verse, right? Which in translation says, well, This is my translation, like, Let us stand, my two friends, my two companions, and weep over the. Uh, and and, and, and and weep from the remembrance over the over the abode of the beloved, right? Nebkim in Dikra Habibi Mamanza. We'll get we'll get into the po poem very very soon. So uh, but before we do it's important to comment on these things. Uh, the way that the Arabs would recognize a poem is by the first verse, right? The first the way that the verse begins. Now I want to open up YouTube again, see if there's any comments. Just so that I'm not ignoring people. Uh Whoa. Yep, I don't think there is. Alright, so I'm just going to rely on people that are going to watch this later. Uh, it is what it is. Okay. So, humble beginnings. In any case, um, yeah, for those of you that are watching, the seven odes, right, are the Ma'alaqa of Imra al-Qais, the Ma'alaqa of Tarafa. I think his full name is Taraf ibn Abdi Bakr. I'll check. The Ma'alaqa of Zuhair ibn Abi Surma. The Mu'alaqa of Labid, so these are they're they're mentioned here in the in the titles of the of the of the book. The Mu'alaqa of Antara, we commented on that one. Uh, well, we commented on Antara before. The Mu'alaqa of Amr, Amr ibn Kulthum, and the Mu'alaqa of Al Harith ibn Haliza. Now all of these poems have different theme, themes, right? And all of these poems are considered Mu'alaqat or the hanging odes, right? Which is probably or the hanging poems. Al Qasaid al Mu'allaqa, the hanging poems, right? Now the term for a poem in Arabic is al Qasida, which comes from the root word maqsad, meaning goal, right? Something with a purpose, right? So the idea behind that is that every uh, poem that the Arab civil that the Arabs uh, composed had some kind of some kind of higher end goal for it right so there's a theme uh, or a variety of themes mostly where, where the beginning is about a beloved that, that has left her home or something beloved or some girl right some woman 
if it's passionate, right? Because there were poems that had rom romantic kind of love, platonic kind of love, erotic kind of love, all kinds of love. And all of these poems mostly started with any type of these buka al uh, what they would call al buka al al atlal, the weeping over the, the the abodes of the beloved, the re the remnants of the beloved, right? So the poet would pass by uh, some building where 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 his uh, beloved woman would uh, be, and then he would describe that building as reminding him of her. And different poets had different types of expressions of this, and different poets had different types of levels of good, eloquent, and rhetorical expression. Probably the best one, which could sum up all the other ones, was done by Majnun, uh, the Majnun of Layla, right? The, the madman of Layla, uh, whose, name is, whose full name is Qais ibn Mulawwah, right? And he was famous for saying that he, I think I mentioned in the, in the last stream, that he passes by the walls of Layla, and it is not the walls, you know, uh, it's not the walls that have enraptured my heart, but the uh, the uh, I'll be just to correct myself self in, in Arabic. Uh, but but the, the the one who dwelt between those walls, the one who dwelt between those abodes, is the is what makes me weep and cry out of um, allergy and, and and nostalgia. Now. Uh, to go back to the Ma'alakat, this is how the Ma'alakat mostly begin, from one sense to another. I commented on on a par portion of the Antara uh, Ma'alakat, on the hanging over the ode of the Black Knight Antara, and we could have already seen that motif. Now, these are the seven, right? The Wandering King, this is how uh, Arbery titles it, uh, and then Tarafa, whom the gods loved, to quote it. Uh, the moralist Malak of Zuhair, right? The, the 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 man who. So the reason he gave these titles is basically because Imr al Qais was a wandering king. He was indeed someone who was a salik, right? A wanderer in nature and commented on it. Then Tarafa, obviously, this is a pagan motif. So I suppose that Arbery might have named it because Tarafa, if he he was a pagan, maybe he was uh, maybe he had some kind of shamanistic role. I don't know. The moralist Zuhair ibn Abi Sulma, this is uh, possible because uh, his Malaka emphasizes morals and, and standing up for justice, which you will see when we read the, his Malaka, insha'Allah. And then the, the centenarian, the Malaka of Labid, right? There's a lot of elegy in it, uh, a kind of uh, chivalric view of, of, of life. The Black Knight. Malak of Antara, he named it because he uh, the Antara is famous for using his blackness and the oppression that he endured due to being black um, as a weapon against his enemies. The regicide, Malak of Amr, this is because Amr, is, uh, Amr ibn Kulthum is famous for praising his tribe and being the, the one who stuck out right within his tribe to save his tribe from what they would call uh, misery or, or, or you know lack of fakhr, lack of pride. Uh, pride generally would be seen as a vice in modern culture, or, or just not just mod well, not modern culture, but traditional cultures, uh, Muslim and Christian cultures. And then we have the leper Malak of Harith ibn Haliza. He's famous for saying stuff like, "Saimtu ila thamanina haulan," something like that. Like, I have lived even unto eighty years, uh, and and difficulty has still not left me. These kind of motifs of of of, of old age and stuff like that. So, anyways, we'll begin with Mimrul Qais. We're reading The Wandering King, right? Bismillah. So this is how the poem starts. The translation is here on page 30. One sec. There's the, 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 the good thing about this book that Arbery wrote is they, they, they provide translations, some of the translations of the poems, in, uh, in English, Italian, and German, I think, as well. There might be another language. I'm not sure if... I think this is Italian, yeah. Anyways, we're going to get into it. So, okay, without any further ado, the reading of Emerald Qais and his Golden Ode. كيف نبكي من ذكرى حبيب ومنزلي بسقط اللواء بين الدخول فحملي فتوضح فالمقرات لم يعف رسمها لما نسجدها من جنوب وشمالي Hold, friends both, let us weep, recalling a love and a lodging by the rim of the twisted sands between الدخول and Haumal. Who's trace is not yet effaced 
for all the spinning of the south winds and the northern blasts. Tara ba'ar al-ar'ami fi arasatiha wa qi'aniha ka'annahu habbu fulfuli ka'anni ghadat al-bayni yawma tahammalu lada samurat al-hayy naqifu handali all about its yards and away in the dry hollows, you may see the dung of antelopes spattered like peppercorns. Upon the morn of separation, the day they loaded to part by the tribes Acacius, it was like I was splitting a colosin. Wukufan biha sahbi alayya matiyahum, yakuluna la tahlik asan wa tajammali, abratun, muharaqatun, fahla inda rasmin darisin min muawwali. There my companions halted their beasts while, uh, uh, while over me, saying, Don't perish of sorrow, restrain yourself decently. Yet the true and only cure of my grief is tears outpoured. What is there left to lean on where the trace is obliterated? ولا سيما يوم بدارة جلجلي ويوم أقرت للأذار متية فيا عجبا من رحلها المتحمل يضل الأذار ويرتمين بلحمها وشحم كهداب الدمقس المفتري ويوم دخلت, دخلت خدر خدر عنيزة فقالت لك الويلات إنك مرجلي تقول وقد مال الغبيت بنا معا أقرت بعيري يمرأ القيس فانزلي Ever so my soul is your want, your want, so it was with Umul Hawairith. Before her and Umul Rabab, her neighbor at Ma'sal, when they arose, the subtle musk wafted from them, sweet as the zephyr's breath that bears the fragrance of cloves. Then my eyes overflowed with tears of passionate yearning upon my throat, till my tears drenched even my sword's har harness. Oh yes, many a fine day I've dallied with the white ladies, and especially I call to mind a day at Dara Juljul, and the day I slaughtered for the virgins my riding beast. We'll stop here for a bit. So, so far as we can see, what Imra ul Qais is talking about is a journey, a travel, right? So we can see the traveling motif already. Ironically, at the very beginning when he says, halt, friends, both, right? Kifa, he uses the dual. Uh, Arabic language has singular, dual, and plural, right? So you can say kif, which would mean stand you, as in singular, stand person, right? Kifa, stand you too. And then kifu stand you people. So we have kifa hot friends both. Kifa nabki min dikra habibin wa manzili. Let us weep, recalling a love and lodging by the rim of the twisted sands between a dakhul and halma. Not to read everything again. The point is, he starts. We see this grieving over the over the over the uh, disappearance of the beloved from her abode. And what we see here is that the poet is actually. Um, He's trying to say that he misses his beloved and his two friends eventually tell him that he needs to man up because that's what it literally means Asan wa tajammali, right? Restrain yourself decently. Another poet actually from the Malakat, he says Asan wa tajalladi, right? Which is another form. So in other words, either behave beautifully or majestically, right? And beauty and majesty are two concepts that Arabs had that was even more refined during the Islamic age, right? So what we have here is essentially uh, this kind of uh, mix of love. You could possibly say erotic love to a certain extent because of the descriptions that are, that are very strong and that follow after this. And then a description of warriorship, right? So the two, one, of, one of the two main uh, human uh, drives, the drive for life, the drive for love, and 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 bonding and then the drive for uh warriorship and, and 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 bravery right so then we see even so my soul is your wont so it was with ummul hawayrith he then describes a, a kind of erotic uh, uh approach to uh women that he met because this man was very passionate he wasn't really a platonic lover uh, unlike antara and some other uh, poets and then he starts commenting on a uh event that most of us would see as misogynistic and I would probably agree with well not probably I would definitely agree that it is but a very funny 
event at least in literature, in terms of literature, where he describes, yes, many a fine a day I've dallied with the white ladies, which by which he's describing essentially um he's he's essentially describing uh women from a specific tribe uh that he disrupted. Now what what happened essentially the story goes that Imr ul Qais was riding on his beast on, 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 on a camel and he really loved this woman from a tribe and he wanted to see her naked. <laughs> right? So what happened was basically he caught them when when the men departed from the from the camp, he caught the women bathing in a in a in a pool, right? And yeah, he sat with his camel on, on their clothes. Yeah, he did that. And basically he stood there until and he told them that whoever whoever among them wishes to re retain her clothes, that uh, she would have to uh, appear to him in, in the form that she was in the pool, right? To not be too explicit. So that he succeeded in that, uh, but the woman that he loved, uh, the woman that he really was fond of, uh, refused to do that uh, herself. And he was very m amazed by that. Uh, and so eventually she fell as well and had to do the uh, had to suffer the misogyny of Imr al Qais but he basically at the same time had some kind of sense of chivalry and basically gave them back their clothes and uh, cooked and sacrificed his camel and then cooked the meat from the camel for them uh, the funny thing is the woman that he liked uh, had some kind of uh, she had a bit of a really odd kind of uh, sadness for him because he was not able to uh, ride back to his tribe now because he wanted to fix his mistake by uh, giving them the food because they were hungry right so then the story goes like this yes and the day I entered the litter when Oneza was was and she cried out on you will you make me walk on my feet right this is what we see she was saying while the canopy swayed with the pair of us there now you've hooked my ham my camel Imr al Qais down with you right but I said ride on and slacken the beast strains and oh, don't drive me away from your refreshing fruit. This is very, uh, very explicit uh, uh, descriptions. Many is the pregnant woman like you, I, and the nursing mother. I've night visited and made her forget her amuleted one-year-old. Whenever he whimpered behind her, she turned to him with half her body, her other half, and shifted under me. So, I apologize for this language, but it is what it is. This is this part in Arabic. ويوم دخلت الخدرة خدرة أنيزة فقالت لك الويلات إنك مرجلي تقول وقد مال وقد مال الغبيط بنا معا أقرت بعير يمرأ القيس فانزلي فقلت لها سيري وأرخي زمامه ولا تبعديني من جناك المعللي فمثلك حب حب لا قد تركت ومرضع ومرضع سوري ومرضع فألهيتها عن ذي تمائم مغيلي إذا ما بكى من خلفها إن حرفت بشق وشق عندنا لم يح لم يحولي ويوما على ذهر كثيب تعذرت علي وآلت وآلت حلفة لم تحللي لم تحللي أفاطمة مهلا بعد هذا التدلل وإن كنت قد أسمعت صرمي فأجملي uh, I think I've already read it a bit there. Yep, I did. So in any case, this is the second story where he describes basically where he's riding next to a woman and he's basically trying to sw sway her into uh, into bed, right? So it's a very, very explicit erotic po poet in the beginning. And then he describes this kind of, yeah, pre-Islamic ignorant age motif of him basically um, having many w women that wanted to share bed with him and that some of them were even pregnant right quite sick and disgusting I agree but we will see <laughs> what else we have in store from Imro al Qais other than uh, uh, you know pre pre civilized uh, a type of pre civilized uh, erotic uh, understanding of life right and so when he says here I've night visited and made her forget her amuleted one-year-old he's basically trying to say that he was so attractive to her that she would leave her own child to have relations with him, right? So <laughs> this is what we get in, in the in the in the first Mu'alaka. <laughs> but in any case, we'll we'll continue. There's some hopeful uh, things for us in the modern age where we have more 
of an education with in terms of respect for women right so then he says ha and a day on the back of the sand hill she denied me swearing a solemn oath that should never never be broken gently now o fatima he said a little less disdainful even if you intend to break with me do it kindly if it's some habit of mine that's so much vexed you just draw off my garments from yours and they'll slip away right in other words he's trying to say i'm not trying to force anyone but you know he's 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 a womanizer basically he's a he's a he's a person that uh, has fallen into the sin, I would argue, in this vice of of being with women, many women. But he's trying to you know always defend himself and he has a kind of false humbleness, right? Puffed up, it is it's made you that my love for you that my life for you is killing me and that whatever you order my heart to do it obeys, right? So he's trying to say this is so humiliating. Whatever I do. Basically, he's complaining about a woman that he likes at that time, right? And he's trying to say that uh, due to him being Arab, right? And we saw that his two friends were advising him to be more, uh, you know, to be more manly earlier. He's trying to complain essentially about her not uh, uh, to respecting his manhood, essentially, even though he's being very, uh, realistically speaking, well, abusive. So, now obviously, this is not a commentary on some kind of... Uh, abuse uh, in the sense of um, uh, that he was a rapist uh, far from that but essentially that he was uh, very uh, tricky and that he had a very good uh, way of dealing with women and so they would fall for him and then regret it essentially a kind of what what the western world would call Don Juanism right so anyways popped up it is that you, I've read this your eyes only shed those tears as so as to strike and pierce with those two shafts of theirs the fragments of a ruined heart right so here he transforms into a loving poet many is the fair veiled lady whose tent few would think of seeking I've enjoyed sporting with and not in a hurry either slipping past packs of watchmen to reach her with a whole tribe hankering after my blood so he's trying to say you know I've sacrificed so much for you I love you so much and yet you do this to me blah 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 you know the classical kind of attempt to to justify one's uh, misogyny right uh, eager every man jack to slay me what time the pleiades showed themselves broadly in heaven glittering like the folds of a woman's beju bejeweled scarf i came in already she stripped off her garments to uh, for sleep beside the tent flap all but a single flimsy slip and she cried god's oath man you won't get away with this the folly is not left you yet i see you are as freckless as ever out I, brought, out I brought her, and as she stepped, she trailed behind us to cover out footprints, the skirt of an unembroidered gown. But when he had, when he, when he, when we had crossed the tribe's enclosure and dark about us, hung a convenient, shallow, and intri intricately undulant. I twisted her side dresses to me, and she leaned over me, slender waisted she was, and tenderly plump her ankles, shapely and taut her belly, white flesh not the least flabby, polished the lie of her breastbones, smooth as burnished. As burnished mirror we were gonna comment on this I just want to read it in uh, Arabic so uh, I think we got to yeah this point yeah this is where he complains about uh, her love killing him بسهميك في أعشار قلب مقتل وبيدة خضر لا يرام خباؤها تمتعت من لهو بها غير مؤجل تجاوزت أحراسا وأهوال معشر على حراس علي حراس لو يشرون مقتلي إذا ما الثريا so thuria here would be pleiades right في السماء تعرضت تعرض أثناء الوشاح المفصل فجئت وقد نضت لنوم ثيابها لدى الستر إلا ربسة المتفضل فقالت يمين يمين الله right يمين الله the by the by the I think this could be translated I'm not sure but maybe by the right by the right hand of God by the by the by the glory of God right so she's making an oath ما لك حيلة there is no strategy for you there is no way you will get get away with this وما إن أرى أنك الأماية تنجل تنجلي خرجت بها تمشي تجر وراءنا ألا أترينا ذيل مرت مرحلي فلما أجزنا ساحة الحي منتها بنا بطن حقف ذي ركام عقنقلي إذا التفتت نحوي 
tadawwa so he's using very very like intense uh, words in arabic actually tadawwa arihuha tadawwa miskuhuma tadawwa al misku minhuma so this is whenever he describes wind or 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 musk he describes it with this verb tadawwa you know in the sense that you know the the and this is a reflective verb the richness of arabic here is showing us that this is uh you know as, as if the wind and the musk are autonomous right they have uh, a kind of livelihood to them masima siba ja'at bi rayy al qaranfuli idha qultu hati nuwallini tamayalat alayya hadima hadima al kashh rayy al mukhalkhali muhaf bidha'u ghayra mufadatin taraibuha maqsuratun kas sajanjali Kabikri Kabikri He's now he's describing right uh, another woman. So he's, he's he's essentially describing how during his travels and during his path, he goes from this kind of beginning stage of love into a kind of erotic love, right? So from, from a, 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 a movement from a, a light-hearted erotic platonic combination of love in the beginning into a more kind of passionate love. And then he goes back into having interest for a new woman after this Fatima woman that he met from a tribe disappointed him. So uh, then he says, when she lifts it upwards, neither naked or ornament, she shows me her thick black tresses and dark embellishment clustering down her back like bunches of, laid of a laden tree. Twisted upwards, meanwhile, are the locks that ring her brow, the knots cunningly lost in the plaited and loosened strands. She shows me a way slender and slight as a camel's nose ra rein, and a smooth shank like the reed of a water red, bent papyrus in the morning the grains of musk hang over her couch, sleeping the forenoon through, nor girded and prone to labor. She gives with fingers delicate, nor coarse, you might say, they are sandworms of Zabi, of Zabi right? I think this is Dabi in Arabic or tooth sticks or of ishel wood so we can see intense connection between nature a shamanistic kind of view a uh, connection between nature love eroticism a real jahili kind of uh, virtuous environment right so the, the interesting thing about the arabs is they kind of lived in a paradoxical state of jahiliya or ignorance right uh, lack of virtue at the same time while while having makari munakhlaq right in arabic meaning uh, the noble virtues of human beings, right? So they were aware of virtues and at the same time, even though they were aware of virtues, they had a lot of ignorant practices like abuse of women, abuse of uh, carelessness for children, uh, you know, um, lack of education, you know, they didn't write that much, but they were very eloquent people. They, they honored patients, they honored uh, these kind of... Um, they had a sense of virtue of, of respecting guests, of honoring the father, the mother, uh, which is very interesting because I think personally I believe that's one of the reasons why they were very prepared for Islam right throughout history they, they, there is an evident preparation for, for the emergence of Islam otherwise the, the society would have been completely barbarian right and, and it happened to have not been that right unlike many other civilizations civilizations in fact that we see uh, Roman and, and, and as such Any, anyways not to get too philosophical about it he keeps giving these kind of uh, like uh, aristocratic erotic uh, descriptions and connects it to nature and the reason he connects it to nature is because he's trying to say that this is part of my travel this is part of my journey right and we'll see why that's the case and the reason I argue that is because now we'll see the second stage right the 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 muallaqat the odes the poems have stages in them right this is the first stage which is the erotic loving stage now will come the stage of natural description and then the stage of war and then the stage of returning to natural description so we'll see that uh, dynamic right now uh, Yeah, I think I got to this. Yep. غير شث شث كأنه أساري عذب أو مساويك إسحلي تضيء الظلام بالعشاء كأنها منارة ممسى راهب متبتلي. Right. So this is a very interesting. I think this is this verse. Yep. At even tide she lightens the black shadows. I think this is the verse. كأن بوب سقي المذللي وطأت برخص غير شث uh, okay, to the Udalama. Yep, she lightens the black shadow. So now, now is the uh, comparison of of uh, 
of, of the woman to nature, right? So very interesting, very obviously shamanistic concept. At even tide, she lightens the black shadows as if she were the lamp kindled in the in the night of a monk at his devotions, right? So this is, uh, yeah, Ruhban. That would be this root, Rahib. So to the udalama bil ishaika annaha manaratun mumsa manaratun, right? The light of the the the, the candle, the lamp, the the lamp, the munara, manara. Sorry, mumsa in the evening rahibin mutabattali right of the of the of the monk that is in tabattul he is in devotion right so there's an awareness of christianity right because monks were, were the only new christian monks there were no buddhist or hindu monks in the arabian peninsula they did have certain uh things that connected them to india specifically and seen or china right uh arabs used to say al hikmatun well i think actually that one came after islam so i'm not going to comment on that but you know, there's a hadith that's attributed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, that says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that says, uh, ilma wa fi sin, you know, seek knowledge even unto China, right? Go to the ends of the earth to, to seek knowledge. So this could be a pre-Islamic notion as well, possibly, I think, because they did have a connection to China, but mostly to India because of the swords, right? The muhannadat, right? We'll see a lot of the words Muhannad in these pods, poems, and Muhannad means the Indian made sword, right? The Hind means India, and then Muhannad means that which is made Indian. In other words, the sword which is which is forged in India. So we have then after the comparison with the monks, so we have this kind of relation between purity, chastity, virtue, and eroticism, which is very very interesting, very rare to see in societies. And I think that the Islamic civilization carried this successfully into into a more virtuous and civilized society later on where uh, there was marriage